Thursday's action in the 2019 BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh world championship on the 2010 Winter Olympic venue, Whistler Sliding Centre in beautiful BC. And Alpenglow descends over the fastest track on the planet as we get ready for the second heat on day one of the four-man competition. I'm Martin Haven, alongside me, John Morgan, and we've got a titanic battle for supremacy shaping up. Well, the guy who's won all the two-man races this year and a lot of the four-mans, Francisco Friedrich, he was out early and, well, did pretty good. A couple skids up top, Martin, but, hey, we're hearing now that he's got an abductor strain. Even though he had the second best start, he's the top German in third place. Second place, Justin Cripps in Team Canada. He won a couple weeks ago at the Lake Placid track. He started ninth. Third best start, Cripps started motoring to the bottom, and he ended up in second. Boy, the speeds, world record speeds, 96.9 miles an hour. Not achieved by this sled, but this guy tied the track record at the start. Keeper Mattis, he brought it down, smooth, didn't touch anything. And this young Latvian, came to the finish, broke the track record. Unbelievable, we lowered the track record by almost six tenths of a second in that run. We could be on our way to getting below 50 seconds. The Olympic record, 50.86, eight years ago, Mark, nine years ago. And a year ago, it was still 50.66. It was this morning. Now we're down to 50.05, we should be in the 49s. Here's our field after the first of four runs. And a big standout here is a disappointing opener for Nick Polignato of Canada. Eva de Brown crashed. He's in the hospital now. He's got a deep three-inch gash across his knee. Tom Delahunty reports having precautionary x-rays. The other boys are OK. But uh, Evo will not be able to go again. Now, the air temperature at the start of the event was plus two. Minus two already, ice temperature will follow that down as the barometer drops. Control steel is minus 2.2. There's our leader. Yeah, and John, you know, to take 6100s out of the Trek record in the first five sleds, hey, never mind the first day's uh, action, is insanity. Mark, what's insane to me is we have six different nations in the top six. Yeah. Usually there's a couple Germans, if not three, in that mix. I don't know how far back we'd have to go to have six na different nations on top of a bobsled yeah. leaderboard. That uh, is a remarkable mix. Not of in this century. Now, in our second heat, we go 20 down to one, and then the remaining two sleds, 21st and 22nd, will go, and that will set our overnight leaderboard. And then tomorrow we'll come back for heats three and four. Heat four, only the fastest 20 go through. And at the moment, on the bubble, will be Nick Spring of Canada. And the sled that is currently in 21st place, Sukyun Jin of Korea. So, we are ready to go for the second of four trips down the Whistler Blackcomb Mountains in the Whistler Sliding Center. First up, Patrick Baumgartner, former Youth Olympic champion, the first Youth Olympic Winter Games in 2012. He won the boys' bobsleigh. Now, Van Gartner in his second appearance in the World Championships as a senior slider. The start wasn't 23rd best start in 94. 91 this time. We'll get a good indication here what this track's going to give us in the second run. Now, the leaders won't come for 20 sleds, so the, it'll be pretty scratched up, but it's going to get a little colder, Mark. Colder, harder ice usually means faster downtime. Well, we're now where we were at the beginning of training in two-man and four-man days, 5 p.m., starting the action on the ice. Ooh, it's late there. And at 6.30, as we are now, the temperature gets to that tipping point. Below five degrees, it suddenly becomes yeah. really fast. And this is where the 50-50 curve is. It's pretty tame tonight. The only crash was up at curve four, five. Well, Hope people the Bruins okay. Tame because they've learned their lessons over two weeks of sliding in two-man and four-man, and they're making damn sure they get through. Simone Batatsu on the right, Manny Mahata on the left. The best speed in the first run was Michael Vogt posted 156.92 kilometers. That's 96.9 miles an hour. That astonishes anybody involved in the sport. And it... The speeds down here, 
it's it's safe. I mean, usually everybody was complaining that the 50-50 can't take these speeds. Not only has it taken the speeds, but uh, these people have blasted off on this fastest track on the planet. I mean, we got to find a new name for Super Speedway. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Well, they're now going into hyper motion, uh, hyper drive, because this is becoming absolutely the quickest any bobsledders have ever traveled. Second in the field, 19th of the first heat is Billy Meyerhans of Switzerland. Jan Moulinier and Mikkel Kwonen join the team. Kwonen, the best brakeman in Sweden, uh, Switzerland, is now a driver as well. And he just finished in third place in a race in Segulda in Europa Cup with, guess what, the two fastest starts in the place. Now he's on the back of this uh, Billy Meyerhans, probably. One of the person, one of the best personalities in the sport. I want to say he's getting near the 50-year-old mark. He still Four. likes driving sleds. 492. That's how good his starting team is with Moulinier, Cyril Bieri, and Mikel Quonen. And he does drive well, Ooh. Billy Meyer Hans. That's Ooh, why he that's keeps not good. his spots. That's where the Dutch crash. Yeah, got it back under control. There. Now the sled that just came down was only 600 slower. This is two close calls so far for Billy Myrans. Now, he didn't race in two-man. He only did two trips in training in the four-man, so this is only his fourth time down at the Whistler Sliding Center this year. Boy, that 50-50 is tame, and it's tame at the most ridiculous speeds the sport has ever seen. Down at the bottom of the track, 93.7 miles an hour. Drops behind Patrick Baumgartner there on the left. A tenth of a second back for Billy Myrans. John, we said so often in this fortnight that you make the race between corners one and four. Yeah. And he nearly had a disastrous tip over out of corner four. Well, Martin, uh, this was close here at four or five. A little hot, you know, and he was nearly on his head there too. And then that wasn't on time. But he sneaks through this 11 combination. There's Billy, day one done. He's a proper old school boxer. And he could not be happier if Mikko Quonen takes over from him, I reckon. Next up, Great Britain's Lamin Dean. Lamin with uh, Ryan Letts behind him. Martial artist, rugby player, and uh, bodybuilder recently. Tremaine Gilling, 100 meter Team GB sprinter, whose mum, uh, Lorna Booth, coaches Great Britain sprinters, and on the back handles, 31 year old Londoner teacher Toby Aluby, one of the tallest mans then in bobsleigh. Well, I'm indeed. Fine adjustment there from Chris Woody on the front of the set. The uh, <laughs> big hammer. He owned the track record and the, star and the speed record yeah. probably 14 months ago. Lamin Dean, silver medalist in four-man, last World Cup race on this track, last season. The last five events on this track have been won by Russians. Yeah. The person before that that won two consecutive years in 2010 was Stephen Holcomb. So this track's been, and there's a Russian in the top five. So, uh, well, Lamin Dean, silver medalist last time out. This is the joint services sled developed for the 2014 games by McLaren been in a shed because nobody can get on with it. He self-funded his season and he went, right, I'm going to see if there's actually anything in this sled. He's still kind of Ooh. negotiating with it. Look at these lines. This is a, everybody is a personal space. Big advantage now over Patrick Baumgartner. This is what he wanted to do in heat one. Heat one was not where he wanted to go. Lamin Dean across the line, 50.97. Well, that's a much better run than a 51-15. Not the speed that he had a couple years ago here, not the start time he had a couple years ago when he had the silver medal, but uh, through yeah. and down. Martin, I just it just astonishes me the sleds are so much in control. Yeah. Well, down on that 50-50 With the end of the fortnight, not the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they had a, but that was way too high. Yikes. And then out of here is oh, not bad by the time he was coming out of here. Six. And then we get in. Look how high he gets on the curve there. Then he dives out. That's an 11. Gets out too early. Ooh, and then the exit of 13, the 50-50, where there was all so many problems in with the women's bobsled event last weekend. So many problems in the two-man event. It's tame now, and they're going five miles an hour faster. 
Look at the snow that collects in the sled in the braking straight. There's about 20 kilos of snow and ice in there. Lamin Dean, 600 slower than his first run. Now, he was tied to the 100th with US debutante Hunter Church. Stepped in at the last minute after training had begun into the two-man spot after Justin Olsen uh, crashed out of contention. Raced well in the two-man into 19th place. Kyle Allison from Austin, Texas. Lane McConnell, close by in Tacoma. Kyle Wilcox is from Tampa. The young 21-year-old, the youngest athlete driver in the field. Hunter Church from Katyville, New York. 489, a little bit slower than their first run. Lana Dean was 46, both runs. Now, don't forget, he was due to come down right after Evo de Brown crashed. Had a 15-minute wait in the glass box by the start before they were able to go again. I think the same thing happened to him in Two Man before his first run. Yeah, somebody definitely crashed. He was hanging around a long while. 21 years old, good lines there, 16 back. Stops the bleeding here, he's got a chance to maintain his position. Good exit here of 11 to 12, 13. Stop the bleeding, now he's got a chance, maybe get it down a single digit. Nice and smooth, let's see how he goes. Still 1600s back, he's gonna be second at the line. He second. ducks his head, the brakeman stick there's up. Shimer looks on to his young 21 year old. Scheimer wishes he was driving sleds when he was 21 years old. Well, Hunter Church and his teammate in the two-man, Jeff Gabois, have properly drunk the Kool-Aid, haven't they? They are absolutely hooked on this sport. He's, Hunter's been hooked for 10 years. Yeah. Driving Pee Wee bobsledding with my brother Sean as an instructor and his father Tommy. But, you know, here, this is a far cry from Pee Wee bobsledding when he's going 80 or 93 miles an hour down this super speedway of bobsledding thunderbird four and a half g's of force hunter church of the usa slips a spot into second fastest 16 sleds to go include one of our chinese sliders this is xiao yi jun now xiao was uh, off at the end of the first heat and the 24 year old in his first World Championships, finished 20th in the two-man race. This is, he started driving three years ago, and uh, this is really his first full season of two-man and four-man. And Pierre Luter says this guy here is one of his best all-around pilots right now. And he's got a lot to choose from. Got a lot of athletes in the field that are javelin throwers. They haven't got the top sprinters, they got a couple. But the track and field, uh, he's got him to get some of the javelin throwers over here. The whole team is under the age of 26. Average age is about 23, Mark. 487 start, third passes velocity. So that's not a bad load. Gee, pretty good. Remember, this is the Chinese. Look at the lines. Pierre Luter's the coach, the Canadian who coached the Russians in 2014, the Koreans in 2018. As a mercenary, he's moved over now to the Chinese program. And their driving coach is the guy who took the silver medal in the four-man here behind Stephen Holcomb, Andre Langer. Yeah, and he also won four gold medals in the previous three Olympics there, too. So Langer, Luders, Ooh. quite a formidable pair. This kid's flying on the bottom. What a battle. 200s, 100s, 0, 100s, 200s. Is he going to be in front of Lam? Indeed, he is by, by 300s. Same hey. time as Lamindine's crew. But we're but. talking about China. Yep. We weren't talking about China three years ago. All right. He's 300s ahead of the man who took the silver medal in the last four man race here. Listen to him. We're starting to figure it out. Yeah. He'll be ready three years from now. He's a big sport utility. Good aerodynamic profile. Look at that. I mean, these guys are well coached. Oh, oh he got high on there. Seven, yeah. Seven, yeah. Bumped high up the corner. And the exit of seven, he's on the wrong wall. And this is down the 50-50. Look at the rudder tip. And he turned hard in the middle of the yeah. curve. Not hard. He didn't. He knew where he was Robin going there, Hutter. didn't he? He had the belief. Then in the finish, the exit, he taps there. And you go uphill there, Martin, for another 100 meters. You can't make mistakes there. China's Xiao Yi Jun is our leader. First five sleds down in heat two of the bobsled four-man world championships. 
into the top 15 after first heat. Song Kai Chi of China is next up. His teammate Xiao Yujun is the leader. So whatever happens now, we're going to have a Chinese leader. Between the two sleds, one whole hundredth of a second, the least measurable distance in a box sleigh race. Well, it would be a Chinese leading the event at the bottom here, no matter what, Martin. There's a mistake on a curve one. Best velocity, yeah. though. Not the fastest start, but they got in so smoothly. That's the coaching from those couple of Olympic champions in Luders and Lange. He's back in the red numbers yeah. now to his teammate. Well, that's corner one to four, losing time there. Bumped on to seven. And now he's considerable back. Now he's going to drop behind Lamendine, in danger of falling into the clutches of Hunter Church. Top three covered by 1600s. And fourth place, Patrick Baumgartner, 6300s back. So there's a yawning chasm. Right there. Who's Yikes. Late, really late on that exit of 15. Well, gets it down, but he loses three places, drops to four. Okay, 51 57. It was a bit of a wild ride down at the bottom there. It's not about it's not about the best times. It's about finish times for the Chinese. I see lots of this mum and dad there with the flag on the wall, but yeah, it's it's getting ice miles. Yeah, it's just it? getting ice miles. And here this this is the norm. Everybody's hugging that left hand wall into the curve ten. Then that makes you climb and you get out of there pretty good. But I think a lot of steering there. Look at the runner tips here on the exit of thirteen. He's a little late, but he checks the runner, checks the sled, it comes off. Watch the almost here. He's late. He steered off too much. Centrifugal force brought him back up. Now he's got to deal with his four Gs yeah. in the finish curve. He thought he was going to crash in 15, and he hauled it off, but he hauled it off too early. Andrew Langer just at the bottom of the scoreboard in the black jacket, smiling as ever. USA's Cody Baskew, 14th after the first heat. Uh, two hundreds of a second behind the world champion Johannes Lochner. He's got Josh Williamson, Jimmy Reed, and Chris Kinney behind him. Chris Kinney break for Hunter Church in a two-man race. Which starts in the first run, 476 for this 24-year-old, uh, the veteran of the U.S. team. We usually say the veteran of the U.S. team is usually a 30, 35-year-old pilot. This is the youngest twosome in a four-man world championships that I might have ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah, the two of them add up to less than the one of Billy Meyerhans. Yes. So that's the whole US driving team. Best start, 478. That's right where they were in the first heat. Top three starts. And like Stephen Holcomb always used to say, he gave so much thanks to the four-man team. They gave me the room to make the odd mistake, he said. Bob Cunio, the builder of the night train sled, the one the Olympic gold medal, just sent me a text. He's watching live on NBCSN. 2700s up on Xiao of China, the current leader, but this is all about trying to move up the order on the second run. What does he do? 50.86, 1300s right. slower. Shiner and Abdul Sabari. Abdul Sabari usually the break on this slide. He's been hurt for the last three weeks. Now, I confidently predicted the track would get quicker. In fact, for nobody so far has the track been quicker. quicker. That's because I said it would. Well, we had four heats of uh, men's and women's skeleton world championships earlier today. The track crew did a spectacular job getting this thing ready for what we saw with these land speed records for bobsledding. Still can't believe 96.9 miles an hour Listen, came down the track in the first heat. We think it's quite impressive you take 600s off, this, off the track record. There's Cody's, mind, six, Cody's dad over there, Craig, <laughs> on the right. All right, so in 13th place after the first of our four heats is Johannes wow. Lochner of Germany. This is even worse than things were going for him in the two-man race where he was a disconsolate eight. I can't believe I was watching what we he, saw in the first heat. Martin, he's tied for the world championship just two years ago. Did, almost tipped over in curve five. Finish. Finish. Well, 476. See what they do here. This is pretty. Ooh, 479. That's shocking. Not a very good exit there. Second best start, second best velocity. This is where his problem started, though. Coming up here, curve four. Watch the exit here. Five. And this is where he almost oh, tipped over the again. Again, gets knocked away. Not as bad as the first heat, but that was still a little unnerving. 
won a team gold last weekend. It's only 600s up on Cody Vasquez, and this is not for a place in the medals. This is for 13. We Huge thought for sure skid. he's going to be challenging for medals. He thought for sure he was going to be challenging for medals. This is his happy place. It's in his favorite back. sled. Is right. he going to be ahead of Cody at the line? Oh, just. Yeah, Rennie Spees and Leah Leopold, not sure about that. Well, I think Johannes Locker is going to have to go back to the drawing board because very disappointing Olympic performance. Now here he is in the World Championships here, one of the favorites in the two and the four. And look at him, you can see the body language. Beat Cody by 200 in each of the two trips. Well, high there above the runner marks. That makes him cross over here, touches on the take on, goes into this curve late. And that's not the way you want to be looking at the next curve. You saw the articulation on the sled split. When it splits like that, there's a lot of air that goes in there. And this is where the super speedway. Hannesy yeah. Lockner, not a happy camper at all. Four hundreds is the difference between him and Cody Baskew. Well, next up in 12th place after the first of our four heats is Alexander Bredikin. Crashed in the two-man training, crashed in four-man training as well. First time ever here, but he's got back on the horse every time. And who's won the last five races on this track? Yeah, Russians. Last, last four. four. Two races. for Zubkov, two for Kazinov. Well, he ain't going to win this. Well, there's another guy coming up named yeah. Andrianov, who's in the mix. Andrianov could easily take the medal. Predikin, though, is a man in his first level, a uh, first year at the top level. He could be a big star of the future. 481, that's not bad getaway. They're certainly not lacking in courage, these guys. Well, pretty good. I mean, this is a, you know, bobsled school for this young pilot. And on this super speedway, he's starting to learn a lot, especially after crashing three times in training in two weeks. Yep. Does it phase him, though? Never been to track before in his life. 200s up. Martin, all week long, we sat in that uh, dressing room up there. These athletes are seeing people crash. Nobody's sitting there bad-mouthing the track. Everybody talking about how they love the speed of this track. Yeah. Well, listen, they're all thrill-seeking speed lovers, and you don't get much more lovely speed than here. He's going to be behind at the line. In fact, he drops two spots. Oh, three. So he's 3,800 slower and drops behind both Lochner and Baskew. There'll be a couple others that could drop behind him also. He's been very serious looking for the entire fortnight. First of all, he had his two-man brakeman. Now he's got three athletes behind him he's got to take care of. And that's a big responsibility for a young man on this track. Alexander Bredikin on comfortable territory he knows better in Europe has been very impressive. 23 years old, this Russian. Flops off a little late there. Pretty Not good. Bad into Very good, nine. though. He's most people are hitting that wall. He didn't. Hey, this could be another Russian star in the making. Well, listen, he's going to learn nothing by crashing. So for him, even if he has to take the a safety steer there. like that, get it down. Do two more trips. Keep your crew safe. What's the Track crew is done up here to that 11, 12, 13 in the IBSF. They've taken a lot of ice out. They've made this super speedway pretty tame down there in the 55th. Brad Hall of Great Britain tied for fourth place in the two-man race with Chris Spring. He's 100th behind the Springer after the first of our four-man heats in the battle for 10th. Yeah, this British crew, 476. You can't see the scar in Brad Hall's hand. Big, he used to be able to, it's like the size of a tennis ball. Big, big accident in the exit of 4-5 about three years ago. Had five tendons severed in his hand, major surgery. Took him about eight weeks before he got back in a box. Right, 400s in hand over Alexander Bredikin. He was 100th up on the Russian from the first heat. Over Johannes Lockner, rather. Fourth place in the two-man. Tied the best British finish since the 66 World Championships in Cortina when they got third. This is a coming superstar for Great Britain, former decathlete. 800s behind. 
Uh, this is going to cost him because the top three are covered by 1,300. Ooh, real high there on the takeoff. He's going to go behind Lochner Bascu and Bredekin at the line. No, Fifth. just in front of the Russian by 100. Fifth best time of the run. Well, he was just in front of Bredekin by 100 on the first run as well. But Cody Bascu and Hansi Lochner have both jumped him. Martin, things are going to start to get really bunched up. Yeah. The track record was lowered this morning by over six tenths of a second. Not this morning, about an hour and 20 minutes ago. And, uh, oh, big bump there. He got high. Yeah. Then he comes down. This is Looter's Loop. There's a reason they call it Looter's Loop. You just saw it there. A couple pressure points, a couple nicks down on that chicane to 10. Here's down into the finish, really climbs high. You saw the slight fish tail up. Doesn't cost you that much when you're going 94 miles an hour. Offers his congratulations to Lochner's crew. As we get to the tail of our top 10, Hansi Lochner leads from Cody Bascu and Brad Hall. 10 sleds who are fastest in the first heat up next, including Chris Spring. The Springer with Neville Wright making his last race appearance this weekend, a decade after his first here in Whistler. 46, exact same start they had the first run. Velocity, third best velocity off the fifth best start. The Springer has medaled on this track. In fact, one of the last two-man events was on this track. He won it. Yeah, he was the bronze medalist in four man three years ago. The first non-Russian behind Zubkov and Kazyanov. That was the last Canadian medal here in a four man sled. 700's back. But Springer, does anybody can find 700's on the bottom of this steep super speedway? It's Chris Spring. 1200's, losing more time. This is a couple more spots, too. It looks like the Sleds are starting Lavin, to he's coming the back. track quicker than it can recover from the colder temperatures. 51, 51 flat. flat. So Lockner's doing what we expected him to do. I think Lockner's team is a little embarrassed to be back where they are. Well, you don't mind hanging around in the leader's box when it's the top three. You do when you're moving up from 13. Lockner a 50.84, then Bredekin and Hall 51.03 apiece. 51.0 for Chris Spring. They've only, they're only reaching 94 and a half miles an hour so yeah. far this heat, Martin. It's disappointing because we're looking for the 96 speeds again, but can't tell much here. 4-5, which that's where Igor De Bruyne of the Netherlands tipped over. Hope he's okay and his crew. And the Springer, runner tips. Got in on his terms. A lot of steering there at the end, though. Good aerodynamic profile by his team. Born in Australia's Northern Territory. Former cricketer. Yeah. 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 Ninth after the first of our four heats from the Czech Republic, Dominic Dvorak. Now, the boys were here earlier on supporting their teammate, Anna van Stettema, who finished fourth, the first non-German in the women's skeleton race. She's gone down into town to party, so she's not here supporting them, you notice. 478 for this uh, very athletic Czech team. Good. A little wriggly. 476 this run. Velocity, though, third best, you know, having a start like that in the third best velocity. They have to watch how you get in that sled and settle before the first curve. Now, 1400's up. Being tidy to corner four. Any skids or taps on the wall there are going to really catch up with you further down the track. When you need that speed, it will no longer be in the sled. Had a breakout season, finishing fourth in World Cup points in the two man. He's the fastest driver oh. that's late there. Watch out! Oh, and he's almost Watch over. out, he's over. How did he not crash? He does. You can see it when you get late into that curve, there's no chance. When he tapped it, it's the first sled oh. to get late into the curve. And that's driver error, Martin. We've seen everybody else come down there, but he exited 11 late. There's a visor that just went, look yeah, how far yeah. up he comes. That's Dvorak's visor. Oh, how fast was he going across the finish line? He's going 87 miles an hour after he tipped over. Well, there's Dvorak. Now, he took a big hit on the wall. The visor. Short wall. His visor exited yeah. the sled we saw. That's why his visor came off. And again, 
This track is super fast and super difficult. That's why the drivers love Before it. Before the sled got to Mark, yeah, almost, almost up to the apex. To the Never seen that. Yeah. And that's the speed that they're doing today. When you crash at the bottom, you lose almost no speed. Dvorak shakes his head. We knew he was in trouble here. Late here, he hits. This pushes him over way into the curve. He's airborne, almost can't get control in. of the sled. Now watch him tap the right hand wall, all right. Watch it come over here. When he hits there, that's when I said it's over. And again, almost rolls into the turn. Yeah, and when you hit there like that, you have no chance in these big sport utilities. Now it's like, uh, turn the lights out, because hauling it off doesn't matter. There's no, yeah. he's got no pressure. He went airborne. He covered half the curve 12 in yeah. the air. All of that body weight at the bottom of the sled just pulls it down onto the ice. Well, still had a breakout season. You know, ooh. I don't think yeah. he hit. I think the sled hit before there. So yeah, you've got to hope so. He Watch his out. visor. You'll see his visor flip out. Yeah. He's up and at him. Well, there's Dominic Dvorak at the front. Chris Spring helping Look get the that. sled back up. Well, there's nobody on this track who doesn't know what a bobsled crash feels like. And there's quite a few who know what it feels to crash Look like. Look at the Germans this. helping. Look, look, look Dvorak wants away. Yeah, that's Lockers. Lockner there. Lockner, the yeah. Germans, Canadians. Everybody. The, the crew's being checked out by yeah. the medical staff. This is what the sport represents. And now the track crew, they're busy again. <laughs> they are getting a lot of airtime, you have to say, because they're doing But a they lot didn't of work. tip over in curve five like the Netherlands yeah. did in the first heat, which damages the track for a thousand meters. Here he tipped over about the 800, 900 meter mark. They only have three, 400 meters to worry about. Yeah, he tipped over doing 90 miles an hour. When he came through the final speed trap upside down, shedding speed, he was still doing 87.8. Hey, all you Masons out there that want a winter job, here you go. A little slush in there, some snow. Yeah. Then let you smooth out these uh, gouges. Now, if you look at the light runner marks, those are the runner lines. You can see the bottom and the top. So you can see there's a different variance of where you steer around the curve. I would say it's about six inches, eight inches below that top runner line is look what you want. Right in the picture, there's one that, set of runner marks. That's not way runner marks. Up high. That's not well, is way that up. A sled mark. That's a sled mark. Yeah, there. that is from a crash, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but uh, so below been a few that. This week huh. and last week. By the way, if you've got a home renovation program that's on pause, you might see some of your drywall experts here. <laughs> if you live in the, uh, Whistler area. in the Whistler area. Well, lots of fans wrapped up warm. Temperature is still sinking here in the hat closest to us. Hansi Lockner's family. You saw uh, Brad Hall's family there as well down at the finish. A few of them sheltering up at the top of the track as well. Some Francesco Friedrich friends and family there. Lots of people making the trip over here. Whistler's not a bad place to come at any time of the year. Absolutely spectacular. Downtown Whistler is as good as it gets. Hey, first heat highlights. This was the fastest the sport has ever seen sleds come down a bobsled track. Our world champion who's won eight two-man events, four four-man events. He came down, set the track record. Okay, we thought, okay, that's good. But uh, the next guy up came down and uh, that was the Latvian. We'll see him in a couple of sleds. Canadian came down four sleds later, Justin Cripps. He won a couple weeks ago in Lake Placid in the four-man, and Cripps didn't get the better start of the top three sleds, but uh, shows some home track knowledge. And Cripps, who uh, he puts himself in a silver medal position, 96 plus miles an hour. This Latvian team, Oscar Kibermanis in the two-man, I thought he was driving too conservative of a line. His wife just had a baby on the Friday before the race. But on this day, he had the perfect lines, tied the start record that's been around since 2010, and broke the track record at the bottom. Mark, 96.9 miles an hour in the first heat. And that wasn't even by Kieber Manis. That was by the Swiss, the Swiss yeah, sled, Mikael Michel Flint, Vogt, yeah. who's driving Rico Peters' sled, which we know is one of the fastest sleds built in the last five years. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to be able to drive these things at those speeds. And as you said, John, nobody has ever come down this or any other track at that kind of speed. So we are entering into all new territory. Well, we'll see those sleds and the rest of our field coming down. We've so far had our fastest 11, or 11 of our fastest 20. And John, this track, 
all the key areas are still causing problems, even for the best drivers on the planet. Well, you know, it's the start. It's the baseball player, the leadoff hitter, bobsledding. It's the fantastic start. Everybody gets in, settles, get down before this first curve. You come out of here, exit seven. You drop seven stories. And next thing you know, you're going 65 miles an hour and the velocity here, no mistakes allowed. This is the mistake where uh, the Dutch crashed right here. Four, five, and now six, okay. You can't be lulled to sleep because you're going up to about 80 now. Looter's loop, double pressure into a straightaway. It's not a straightaway, it's a chicane. Everybody hits there. We've been seeing that. Two counter lefts, nine and 10, and then shiver. This is where Dvorak got in trouble. He was airborne in this curve here, had no chance to steer in the 50-50. This is 96 miles an hour, no shock system. Listen to the sound and the track record. Shocking, 50.05. In the Olympics, it was 50.68? Uh, 50, yeah, 50.69, I think we, we uh, looked at. No, no, it was 50.66. <laughs> Uh, before uh, it was tonight, 50.66 this morning. 50.86 at the yeah, Olympics. That's right. Two tenths in nine years, and then six tenths in five sleds. Martin, tomorrow, there's no skeleton. Here's our standings now. There's no skeleton on this track tomorrow. It will be like a It'll be. Mirror. We're going below 50 seconds yeah. tomorrow night. If we don't tonight, we will no, tomorrow. No, I don't think the track's got it left with these crashes, the delays. I think uh, the track's given up enough. But this is the sleds that have come down so far. Evo De Bruyne, whether or not Dvorak goes, he's still got a chance to get in the top 20, yep. only 130 out. Yeah, it's possible. Well, waiting at the top of the track is Yun Jong Won, our Olympic silver medalist. There he is at the back of the shot. Hasn't got his helmet on yet. They've been told it's still some while, clearly, until they're on the ice. And for the fans who come out here, either to watch the race or to support friends and family, it's a bit of a chilly evening. Temperature now dropping down to around minus five. Oh, it's a, a great look, at, look the... at the runners. Look at the high polish on those. They spent hours polishing with super fine grain grit to make them mirror perfect because friction is your enemy on this track. Carbon fiber. You know, the carbon fiber allows you to redistribute the weight. And now watch the body. Watch the back of the sled. The way that air exits out of the back of that sled is so important martin there's yeah. some different different black magic in the back of the sled when you take a look at francisco friedrichs that's very very different lochner and his crew there chatting to his mom and his dad who are there before, beside the bavarian flag uh, from bester's garden in bavaria where the Königsee track is that's where he won the world championships last time out looking down along the sled a little light flashing being that's the the box that gives us our telemetry data now if you look at the back of the sled here you see the push bar the d-rings are in there see all the comfy seating no you don't see the comfy seating do you you just sit on the bare carbon fiber floor and you hold on to steel he handles steers to the left while he's blocking it i want to show you the back of the sled one minute to start to give it so we're going to turn it over now, if they show us the runners, you might be able to see a little number on the runners. The runners are submitted for approval by the IBSF. There's a certain grade of steel that they have to be made from. How you cut them, where that rock is, as this is probably the most unhappy leaders we've seen this year. Yeah. He should be up in the top three or four chasing down a medal. Doesn't want to be here, wants to be still yeah. waiting in the changing room, doesn't he, for his go, but he and is that, where that, he is. And that team was a world championship team two years ago. Yeah. And now they're sitting back here in their double-digit placing. Before they're all said and done, three more good heats, he'll be up in the top six or seven. Well, he leads with the fastest eight still to go, and there is no guarantee the track is going to be any quicker for our fast guys. Now, this might help to concertina the field a little bit, and that can only add to the excitement levels. Track is clear for Yun Jong Won of Korea to get this first heat to the four man bobsleigh. Second heat, to the four man bobsleigh back underway. Eighth place after heat one. And he has a near two tenths advantage over current leader Johannes Lochner.
So last year when he won that Olympic silver medal, he had the 11th and 13th best starts here with a, with a different team, three different guys. 11th best time in the first run at the start, and he has the exact same start time as he had the first run. 34 years old, he's the right age, he's best got the right velocity, experience. Though. Best velocity, not the best speed. Martin, I think that's because we just waited about 10 minutes and the ice got a little colder. Yeah. And I think there's a little less friction out here. Well, he tied the fastest escape velocity there with Cody Vaskew. Vaskew's crew started off 476. So those guys have loaded very well. 478, Cody's crew. So he's right through the 50. Oh! I just said he was right through, no problem. And then he had to Robin Hood it to get off the curve. The less we talk, the better it is, I think, sometimes. Across the line, will he beat Lochner? Yes, he does. 50.89. Well, Lochner came down 50.84, but there was a big gap between him and one after the first heat. So there may still be some fireworks left in this track. Legend in Asia, the first ever athlete from Asia to win an Olympic bobsled medal. He also carried the flag in last year's Olympic Games for Korea, for uh, South Korea, with a North Korean athlete yep. joint. That was pretty oh, historic. Look at that, lines the baby. back of the four-man. It's hard to get those four-mans in trouble, but when they get in trouble, they have a mind of their own. He's laid here, too. Not so hard on this track, is it? 16 corners filled with bear traps demons all yeah. over the place boy that guy gets out of the sled real quick there yeah not surprised after that run down at the bottom there there's your John Wanna career the leader with the fastest seven sleds still to come and eyes of steel for Nico Walter we go to his home track Altenburg for next year's world championships he was the bronze medalist in the two-man last week Nico looking to take a medal here in the four-man as well this was his race he hoped not so far. Three, finish. And the Korean who's down below, tied for the silver medal with this guy, who's got three of the four guys with the same, only new addition to the team is Paul Krantz. 478. Velocity, not the best velocity, and he drifted at a curve one. Drifted there, too. Losing time in the first three or four quarters is always going to catch up with you. Won the opening race of the year in Winterberg second last week in Calgary, but he's been nursing hamstring. He targeted this event. Right now he's pulling away from one. He's doubled his first heat advantage, and he's now into the Gold Rush Trail. As he should be. Nico Valter should be in the medals in this race. Seventh of the first heat, it's gonna be a he, long climb. But he could do this. Here we go, Gap's coming back down over Yung Chong Wan. Not very good speed. Oh. 50.86, 4,200 slower than his first run. Now, I'm trying to tell if this is the new FES four-man or if it's the one that he got that Olympic silver medal with. I'm not entirely sure he's used both this season. They were different colors at the front. I wonder if he's gone back to his Olympic sled. I don't think so, Martin. It didn't have very good speed. He had a little touch there. Yeah, well, that's why. And also, he was skiddy one, two, and three. And let's see how this angle looks for the runners here oh Ooh. pulls it off that's a lot of friction so. friction reduces your speed is the track getting faster he, doesn't like he it. was caught out there in 50 50. he's not a happy leader no, he's not. that's because the fastest six sleds are still to come not necessarily all of them are going to stay in the top six but then not necessarily any of them are going to drop out what about Mikel folks second out of the start hut and with the highest speeds almost all the way down the track off a 12 fastest start. Well, this sled is Rico Peter's sled, the reckless driver from Switzerland. Who, he was fast any place he was with this piece of equipment right here. And this young 21-year-old, him and Cody Bat, or him and uh, Hunter Church are the youngest two in the field. 481, better than his first run. Look at that speed, though. Yeah. Very good velocity. They load fast and gently and he is good in the early corners rico peter took a silver medal here two years ago in the four-man race with this sled fourth at the olympic games last year only because he had to start 16th in the first run he was top three in the next three heats and, and when finished rico, fourth when rico was driving on this track two years ago mikhail vote wasn't even in the bobsled program 
400. Oh. The He's speed is fast. Ahead of Nico Valter at the bottom is 156.92. He was the speed record holder in the first team. What has he got? 152.5 wow. second Yo! best speed. Look at these guys. Yeah. Christoph Lange, yeah. Wolfgang Stopper, 21 year old kid in the front seat. That's because he's eased away from Nico Valter by 23 hundredths of a second overnight. He's in the top six with what would appear to be the fastest sled in the field. Second year driver, was not a brakeman, didn't do any sliding, didn't come from Luge, none of the above. I think this kid's arrived. <laughs> no kidding. You know, Martin, you're an auto racing guy. How important is it to get a good piece of equipment? Good piece of equipment, good start, but you can give me the look best at the, look car at the line. in the field. Hardly any yeah. steering down there, he and believes. that's why he had those second best speed coming to the 12-14th sled off the hill. The only thing he lacks is experience. He's got the speed, he's got the bravery, he's got the hand-eye coordination. Mikel Vogt leads with the fastest five sleds still to come. <gasps> And in those five, six different nations in the top six in heat one, we have Austria's Benny Meyer. He struggled all year with a hamstring injury, okay, missing okay. races, having to okay. sit in in races. And now he wants a medal. 1,500, John Morgan, cover the top five sleds. Well, this young Austrian, he used to be one of the youngest in the field. He's about 27 now. Five. 479, pretty much exact what he had in the first run. You think so, don't you? Look at that, best velocity. You think Benny Meyer's old, because he's, this is his fourth world, he's still only 24. No. Yes, Benny Meyer is still only 24. Look at the lines, perfect. He is a student of the game. He's built his own sled top to bottom, you know, reconditioned him. That's what I like. I think that's what the drivers don't do enough of. Here we go, this is his shout to try and get into the medals. 15 hundredths off the lead in the first heat. He's already Wait. opened up 22 hundredths over Mikel Vogt. Oh boy, he's flying now. Gap's coming down a fraction, two tenths. Still though, 15 hundredths is gonna be enough. Well, this is what his first heat lead was. It's gonna be around Vogt's time, 50.76. 100 quicker ah. than Mikel Vogt, 50.75. But the with Austrians only, will take it. With only 1,500s covering the top five sleds. I was very impressed with both speed and the bottom part yeah. of the track. Meyer's speed dropped off down there. But he's, he's you know, there's four heats of a bobsled race. There's four rounds of a golf tournament. You can't win the race in the first day, but you can certainly lose it like you, Johannes Lochter's yeah. chances did. So you've got to put three consistent runs. Tomorrow's the moving day in the third run. Put yourself in a position to win a medal. Meyer, how much steering? Not bad. Yeah, Look pretty good. He believes he's shooting 60s, isn't he? Hansi yeah. Lockner shooting 70s in the first two heats. There's his wife, Elizabeth Meyer. Finished 10th this morning, skeleton. Yeah. Benny in the top five. The Swiss, young. Tiny margins here. Okay, here's the defending champions on this track. Max, For, sorry, yeah. Max Imaginoff for Russia, 300s ahead of Meyer. Fourth fastest, 100 out of the medals. Russian sleds fly in this track. They've won the last four events staged here. And there are no slouches at the start. Seventh best start, 77 in the first run. In down quickly, 479. Let's watch the velocity. Did they get rewarded with a good load? No, fourth best velocity. Andrianov, as we saw him in training, he flew well, every fifth, heat. Fifth best start, fourth best velocity, so they gain a little bit. Got to keep it at the top of the track. Quiet through three, four, five, six. Got to keep it the green numbers here. He doesn't. Down to 100. He was 300 ahead of Benny Meyer from the first heat. In and out of the lead, tying. Now he's a fraction behind, but he is quick at the bottom in his Valmer sled. 200s behind at that clock. Good speed here in the finish. Down at 300s now. Big height, letting it fly. 400. Yeah. Benny Meyer moves up at least one overnight. It is so tight, you can't afford to blink in the wrong place on this track. Uh, Four-man bobsledding at its best. 
when they're separated by hundreds like this. Well, Maya Antinov and Vogt separated by 12 hundreds. They're the fastest three. Nico Balta in fourth, 35 hundreds back now. This could be medals for the youngsters and the newcomers. 30-year-old Antinov, not a youngster, but relatively new as Russia won, that's for sure. Good season for him. I mean, when he started this year, Kazinov was still racing for the Russians. Wow. Well, here's a story. Here's our fastest three sleds next, our fastest three starters as well. Here's our world and Olympic champion in two and four man. Double gold medalist last year. But we're being told he's nursing an abductor muscle strain. They only had a 74 start in the first run. We all expected him to challenge the record. Well, for 70. Wrong with his driving though. Yeah, he didn't have very good one to two and two to three, Martin. Let's see what they do here. 474, safe start. Let's watch him get out of curve one. Not, Not bad. bad. Curve two. Much better than his first run. He okay. wavered up there both both he, or uh, both curves. This is critical here. There'll be one loose run somewhere, and the rest of them nailed on. Well, he's only won eight two-man races in a row. And then the World Championships, that's nine. He's also won four four-man races. Well, the, the World Championships last weekend was 11th straight, including Olympic Games in two-man. Guy's on some mission. Five four-man wins this oh. season. Oh, my goodness, nearly parted. Got away from him. But Olympic champion and world champion Mariana Yamanka nearly parting in a gold medal winning run. She knew she'd crash, this leg just didn't go over. Okay, 50 57. They're at the bottom. Look at the concerned looks on the coaches. 4100 slower than his first trip down. He'll be in the medals overnight, but where will he be in the medals overnight? A lot of bobsledding left. Okay, let's, this is where he enters the danger zone. Too low there, too, he has to climb this curve here. Now watch it come over to the right side of our picture. He might have tapped before this. Does he tap? Yeah, he taps there. That's where the danger zone is in the entrance to the 13. There he has to Robin Hood it, to steering maximum to get off the Never curve. Never seen him do that. Never. Watch the coach's expression. Look at the coaches, they know. Look at Rennie Space. Oh. I've never seen him Robin Hood a sled off a corner. That's what Whistler will do to you. Two fastest sleds remain. One Canadian, one Latvian. Justin Cripps, first trip of training in four-man after the track had been spritzed, was ready to go. They went off a huge race start and went under the track record to set a marker. Go, go, go! 476, they should match that or get better. This is a very accomplished team. Look how quickly they're in and down. Oh, and look how smooth 75. Velocity, 64. Ooh, not a great exit, though. That was better. Immediately went to the red numbers. Well, 200, good. that's nothing for what Cripps did in the first run. They had 300s over Friedrich from the first team, but he'll make his money back further down the track. Yeah, it's called home track advantage. If he wants to win this tomorrow, though, he's going to have to be cleaner in one, two, and three. He still has a chance to catch Friedrich on the bottom like he did in the first run. Started ninth. Ooh, six. Here he comes. That's going this out. Is, yeah, nice exit there. Was 200s, it's out to 600s of a second. He's Seven. not going to catch Francesco Friedrich. He's going to be second at the line. Whoa. Still in the medals, but Friedrich leads, Cripps in second. And we still have our first heat leader, the fastest man ever down this track, to come. I think the difference was that Friedrich was so loose up in curve two to three. On the first heat, yeah. Tidy that up. Justin Cripps, Ryan Summer, Cam Stones, Ben Cokewell. We crashed with him in the two-man. Yeah, but they went on to win a silver medal in the yeah. two-man. Look at that skid there. That wasn't perfect. And in here, this is where Friedrich got in a little trouble on oh. the 50-50. And that is any Robin Hood in there? No. Very, very, very non-stressed exit of the curve. There's, uh, All right. There's Cripps. Friedrich's crew there. Okay, we have one more 
exciting oh. down the track. Well, we got a few more after this. We too. might have three more exciting sleds. Well, Friedrich not happy with his day so far. He lies in the lead. Will he lead overnight? He was 1100s behind Oscar's Kiba Manis. The fastest bobsled trip in history this man drove in the first run. Well, far on 70, they tied the start record that Andre Lange set in 2010. I wonder if their strategy is, let's go for the record. You don't want to run too far here. You want to get in the sled, use the gravity and the severity of the the vertical drop. So you want to get in, get down. That was Steve Holcomb's secret to his gold medal here in 2010. Team in and down quickly. Boy, they are settled track record. 469. Oh boy, he's going to collect everything on the way down today, isn't he? A new start record. Velocity wasn't that good. And that beats the record set by Andre Langer and his crew in the Olympics in 2010. There's no records left on the track. We've lowered them all disciplines. How low can they go? Can he get below 50 seconds? I don't think in this run. Tomorrow night, maybe. Well, let's see what he's got. 1,200 up on Francesco Friedrich. That's not going to be a track record if he's half a second up at the bottom. Only nine. He's coming back. Is Friedrich going to lead overnight despite the fact that he appeared to be upset with his run? 700s. It could even be a dead heat of the line. Four. Four of a second we have got one hell of a race on our hands okay in the four man. very interesting lost some time back i think they surprised at their start record they didn't get away with the best velocity wow it's okay oscars the Either. other oscars mel bardis his teammate won the world championships for the first ever for latvia in 2015. The only Latvian driver ever to win World Championship gold. Runner tips. Pretty good exit there. Wow. Hey, look at them. They're looking pretty happy, but what a race we've got. Oscars Melbardis leads overnight by 400s. Justin Cripps 1100s back. Then there's a gap to Benny Meyer, Max Manjanoff, Mikel Vogt. The field did spread out a little there. Some tight battles behind. Spring, Hall, Bredekin. Martin, let me say this. Six different countries in the top six. I'm so impressed with that. I don't think we've seen it in this century. Two sleds still to complete their day. Suk Yun Jin of Korea, 21st after the first heat. Now to get the best ice tomorrow evening, he needs to overhaul Patrick Baumgartner of Italy. And he was only 600s behind him. Yeah, but Baumgartner went first. This is 20 sleds. Yep. Plus the crash in between. So he's at a serious disadvantage. Speed at 120 meter mark 12th. Now he started 16th fastest, 14th fastest rather, Baumgartner, 23rd fastest in the field. Baumgartner is currently, actually it's Dominic Dvorak he has to overhaul, who's two, oh right, so Dvorak crash, so he's automatically in the top 20, but unless Nick Polignato gets by him. So Dominic Dvorak will not be in the top 20. And Sukhjian is, in moves fact, up, moves yeah. up ahead of Patrick Baumgartner. And uh, Son of Korea. China. From China, excuse me. So who moves up two spots? Count that three as Dvorak has crashed. And Billy Meyerhans of Switzerland is now in 20th place. And it's he that Nick Polignato will have to overhaul to make it into the top 20. Yeah, Polignato's only 10 hundred, or... Uh, Dvorak's only 10 hundredths behind Meyerhans. He should, you know, be able to beat that easy if, if they go tomorrow. That'll be a question that uh, we'll have to find out from the Czech camp. We'll wait and see what tomorrow brings, but for Nick Polignato, this is a must-do run. If he gets into 20th place, he'll be the first off in the third heat tomorrow evening. No, they go, they go first to 20 tomorrow. Oh, first. they do. You're right. Yeah. Leader goes first. Leader goes first. Right but, the it's the, but in the final run, yeah. the 20 to 1. Yeah. So he's trying to get into that final run package. Yeah. What he's got to do is avoid a crash, the kind of incident that took him out in the two-man. 
Some Paul Adams from Hamilton. Gonzalez is a Brazilian guy who lives in Calgary. Norton's from Ottawa. And Joyce, the brakeman, he's from nearby Cotona, BC. Paul Nato. Boy, I'd like him to be this far back. This is an experienced pilot. In the hole. But he's had some issues there in the last two weeks. One crash in training. And the two man. Two man seems like a month ago. Yeah. Well, he came back with some redemption with a team bronze uh, silver medal for Canada. Oh, late. Yeah. Knows the danger though. 22nd place. Is he going to be ahead of Dominic Dvorak? He is not ahead of Dominic Dvorak. Well, Martin, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure what to say about that. He completed both runs on his runners, and Dominic Dvorak is 21st. Nick Polignato is 1800s behind a sled that came across the line upside down. But he came across the line upside down at 85 miles an hour. Polignato was going faster. 92 miles an hour. We gotta go and talk to timing or <laughs> I think we need to talk to Polignato. I mean this is a rocky ride. How much does he well, hold a lot of it? There you there. There's so. your there's your friction. And again, actually I think uppermost in his mind is getting his crew down. I'm very happy. No. And there's a man who may not sleep entirely restfully tonight. And that brings us to an end of our first day of four-man bobsled action. Well, we called about 200 sleds yep. today between the men's world championship and women's. And well, this Latvians, well, they've won one time ever in the 85-year history of the world championships in the Olympics. And that was in 2015 by Oscars Mel Bardis. Well, Oscars Keeper Mattis, who didn't start driving till the 14-15 season. And this decathlete, who just had a baby about eight days ago. He hasn't seen his newborn. And maybe he can deliver the newborn a world championships because after two heats, he's the leader. You know who Mel Bardis beat in Innsbruck in 2016 into silver? Francisco. Francesco Friedrich is exactly correct. But it's Friedrich another wretched was, Oscars. Friedrich was at first yeah. in the fourth heat, and yeah. Malbardis posted the time. Friedrich couldn't match. Friedrich might yet be in first in the third heat. Yeah. Justin Cripps lies in third place. Benny Meyer and the rest probably out of the medals. But on this track, you can't count anything out. Ooh. Chris Pring and Brad Hall, I'm already predicting that's going to be a dead heat, like it was in the two man race. 400s between them. Martin, I, uh, I've, been on, could happen. I've been on the edge of my seat here for about an hour and a half yeah. of these two heats. Wow, the, the Whistler Sliding Center, the super speedway of bobsledding. The fastest bobsleigh trips ever seen in history Speed. have just taken part. And tomorrow, the track will be even better prepared for the final runs. We start at five local, two Eastern, 0100 GMT. You cannot miss it.